This will be dangerous to say, but I think it's one of the most impressive pieces of Trackmaster 2 gear that I've seen to date. And I tell you what, I'm, well, I think I've seen it all. Out of my way! Wow! Ah, Thomas is down! Thomas is down! Ah! Well, hi there, Thomas fans. Hey, I found some new Trackmaster 2 trains. I thought I wasn't going to find these. I was starting to get worried. I've got Steelworks Thomas, I've got the Merlin the Invisible, and Steelworks Hurricane. When I saw these on the shop uh, shelf, uh, there were two of these that were really popping out at me, and there was one other that wasn't, and maybe we'll see that in this video. Just as a curiosity to kick off, we'll take a look at the back of the box here. The box is saying there, collect them all. The Steelworks Thomas looks like it's got cherry cheeks. The Steelworks Hurricane looks like there's some interesting rolling stock going on there. But I think the real surprise package of this set is Merlin the Invisible. There's that read there on the back of the boxes. It's in fairly small print. You can pause the video here to read the full thing. But basically these engines are related to the journey beyond Sodor. Now if you like what you see in this video of these toys, uh, the best thing to do and to help Mattel Company and boy that they need help at the moment is go out and buy these toys. Find them online somewhere where you like or find them in store which might be even a bit trickier. But please... If you like what you see, uh, do the right thing and go out and buy it. And that wasn't an ad for Mattel. Uh, in all the years I've been on YouTube, they've never spoken to me. <laughs> we might take a look at the Steelworks Thomas first. The Thomas in the set looks rather interesting. One thing about Trekmaster 2 is I've got a ton of variety of these types of engines now. It reads up here, Rocking Bucket goes from empty to full. That's going to be curious to see. I, I paid $20 for the toy. I dare say it's half that price overseas, and it's 2017 copyright. A uh, bit of a dry video so far. I think we can spice it up. You know how? Very simply. Time for the chicken. If you didn't know, rubber chickens are really good at getting toys out of boxes, and I do it all the time. Sometimes it's about hitting at the right angle. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Chicken's done it again. Thank you very much, Chicken. Oh, Thomas has crashed. It's really weird how the chicken divides the audience. We'll need you back later. Go wait for a second. Okay, we've seen that. Um, you can do what you want with that. You can maybe paint it up as part of a set. Maybe what I'll show you. Uh, constructions here to how to put batteries in. Do we need that? Nope. Because I'm a man. And here's Thomas with his very special rolling stock. Yay! Just notice those little rubber bands and visible ones. And I'll give it a daddy snip. That's exposed some more packaging, I think, and that. Um, looks like hot iron bars or something, I think. I've had a sneak peek, but I'll just throw some batteries in and make sure Thomas works first. I like feeling the switches. It's a nice positive switch on this one. There's always that debate about Trackmaster 2, whether you like it or you hate it. Well, I dare say if you don't know anything else, uh, there's nothing wrong with this. Before I close Thomas up, oh yes, Thomas is a goer. That's nice to see. And I'll sneak Thomas's top back on and we'll take a good look at this toy train, yeah. It's not going to disappoint. I'll just break away the rolling stock here to take a look at Thomas. I think the first thing I'd like to do is make a comparison between a normal Trackmaster 2 Thomas and this Steelworks Thomas. Man, it is a gritty, grimy, dark sidey type of uh, Trackmaster 2 Thomas. It's got a, a curious face, the fact it's got a bit of a cheeky thing going on there. Uh, grime on the face, the black running board and everything looks cool. I think it looks cool. Overall, it is a stark difference to a normal Trackmaster 2 Thomas the Tank. Well, I'm going to do one of my infamous in-hand appraisals, and I really need to do it on this one because this is a very different sort of Thomas. The face, I think, is the best way to start. It's got these really big eyes, an expression that I haven't seen, and to really show you how different it is versus a normal Thomas... Uh, especially the eye area, look at that. To me, this Steelworks Thomas is a very interesting to look at. You want to look at this toy. Uh, it's a very dark, moody toy. I like it like that. The detailing on it goes across the top there, and it's not done with stickers. It's done in the same process, by the look of it, as they do Thomas Minis. And like Thomas Minis, there's no detailing stripped into the back here. It's just black. Along the bottom here... Uh, the wheels are detailed, which is nice, but the connecting rod isn't, which makes it look a bit strange because this is like this really clean piece that's not affected by the grub. Because I haven't seen the film, I'm not quite sure why Thomas is in this peril. I'm sure my audience can fill it in, even though some of them seem to have seen it before it was released, which I can't work out either. 
Uh, one thing I'll say about this, Thomas, here, I'll make a prediction here. This will not sit on the shelves um, for too long. I think this Thomas is going to be very, very popular. The first piece of rolling stock, it looks like a cement mixer, but it's whatever they use in steel works to cart round molten steel and they pour it, okay? I don't know what it's really called. It's got a trick feature where it looks like it's actually empty, and if I click it once, it looks like it's full. I hope you can see that. I'll do it one more time. It's full, and poof, it's empty. I know some people aren't going to believe me, but believe me, it works. Uh, it's all sort of... You know, not bright colours, very different to a lot of the other Trackmaster 2 rolling stock that I've got. I thought initially that if you spun the wheels, it spun around, but it's, no, it can't do that because there's a arm there to stop it from turning all the way around, although you can. Can I take this off as well? Oh, there we go, I'm starting to pull it apart now. So if you, if you want to take that off and throw it at someone, you can, or through your TV, and you can put it back in if you're going to be playing safe, but then I'm going to start wrecking the toys, aren't I? Now this piece here, again, it's a nice dark colour. There's not many of these that I've got which are darker set colours and and green wheels. The iron bars here look spectacular. They're very, very bright looking. So it's obviously ooh, very hot. I've just burnt my little fingers there. Uh, nevertheless, they are two very interesting looking pieces of rolling stock. I've got my turntable set up here. I've got my CS track and my CL Trackmaster 2 track. I've got the normal Thomas pulling the um, the brighter rolling stock as it used to be because I like to see this contrast between the Steelworks Thomas and what it pulls along. I'll get that with Thomas going first and that Thomas going second. Go Thomas, go! And I can see our normal Thomas there is steaming along quite nicely but on the outside is coming the Steelworks Thomas. Looking extremely awesome, isn't it? Very, very nice looking Thomas that. I like it a lot, and the rolling stock looks very nice as well. I think it's important to see how bright the toys normally are versus the Steelworks Thomas. It really is a huge contrast. And for the fact we've got a nice custom face there, and it looks so different with some very interesting rolling stock. Man, it's sticking a lot of the Thomas boxes for me. I'm also noticing this uh, Thomas here starting to steam away from our standard Thomas, which is very, very nice to see. Go Steelworks Thomas, go! Oh yeah, Steelworks Thomas is uh, doing quite well there. It's basically lapped the normal Thomas. It's weird with Trackmaster 2, I've said this often, uh, sometimes you'll get ones which just seem a little bit faster than others. And it's never been explained to me why. You also get some which are like lumpy runners, so I think it's something to do with the way the gears engage with the track or don't engage. That aspect of it does disturb me, but uh, I can get calm and comforted by looking at the Steelworks Thomas because it looks awesome. And when they're apart from each other, I can get nice cool shots like this. You can see the, the very moody Steelworks Thomas over there, and in the foreground is our ordinary Thomas looking a little bit too bright for my liking, but hey, that's the way he normally comes. And again, Steelworks Thomas there, look at that. Doing a really nice job, steaming forward, steaming forward. It's really, really nice. Remember, boys and girls, please go out and get this. Beg your parents, please buy me a Steelworks Thomas. It looks awesome. Please, please, please. It's weird with children. Um, my son and daughter said to me, well, they explained to me how it works. I said, oh, Dad, if we nag uh, long enough, in the end, we end up getting the toy. It's a bit sad, isn't it? But uh, something about these two Thomases here, I can't keep my eyes off the dirty, dirty Steelworks Thomas. The next Trackmaster 2 bit of goodness we're going to take a look at is called Steelworks Hurricane. If I read the box up there, it says the buckets rock side to side, so it maybe interacts with the wheels somehow when it's going along. Steelworks Hurricane, he looks like a meanie. If you got a face like that, it doesn't look too happy. It does look interesting, the rolling stock, and certainly a very curious paint scheme. That's where I have a chicken's backside, that's its head, and that's where I grab it. And then I start doing this. Come on, Steelworks Hurricane. Come, Papa. Yeah! One thing I know is a chicken will get a hurricane out of the box. You believe me? You better believe me. Look at that, it's out. The chicken's actually really good at cleaning up. Watch this. Wooshka. Because I'm a man, get rid of those. Whoosh. I've just jumped a step here and I put batteries in the hurricane. Uh, I'm because I haven't seen the film. I don't know what this engine does, if it's experimental or what. It just looks like grumpy, doesn't it? Or is it happy? It's got one of those sort of in-between faces. Maybe, I don't know, the audience is going to fill in the gaps for me. 
Uh, these bits of roller stock are very nice, and yes, when we get moving here, I think they will move for us because I can see it's got the gears and blah blah and cogs that will make things happen up here. Also, that bit up there spins, so it's one of these. It's like a well, it's like a fidget spinner. It's going to keep your little fingers so busy. Quite like them. And let's give an in-hand appraisal of this. <sighs> Well, we'll start there on the side. You can see a little plate there which says Hurricane. Uh, the detailing on this, uh, like the Steelworks Thomas, it's done like the Thomas Minis, so it's not stickerized, it's been paint dottedized. Um, I don't know whether it's meant to be like that, but you can see the blackness there's got uh, like a, I don't know, like a glue thing on it. Maybe it's because he's, he's grubby and everything. I, I can only assume it's part of the dressing down of this model because it is a grubby looking model but it's the way it's been made although his face is clean and I don't know to me it's like an angry face I don't think I'm going to trust that character it says number 20 there and in a strange way it's reminding me of Gordon and Henry and maybe because of this part here and I'm sure the audience will fill in all the gaps because they are the train fanatics. Got some de uh, rivet detailing around there and no real detailing on here apart from a lamp. Another number 20 there, up into the driver's cab. Yeah, all in all, it's actually, it's nice, but it's out of the three we're going to look at in this video, it's not the one that's sort of shouting out at me as, as the other ones are. I'll just do a bit of train swapping around here. I'm going to move Steelworks Thomas here into the inside track and I'm going to bring over the Hurricane. Which actually, I should have made note, the plastic top on this is actually quite heavy. The amount of plastic they've used. So it may hamper his speed. Maybe the strength of this train is the rolling stock there. Okay, I'll get Steelworks Thomas going first. Go Thomas, go. And the Hurricane's going to be chugging along following him. Yeah, look at him go. Yeah, look at the lava pots. They're tilting and doing their thing. Looks cool. Like a lot. As that still works, Thomas is just flying on the inside. I really do like the lava pots there, which are bobbing around. Hey, you can't keep yours off. Still works, Thomas, but hey, we're looking at the hurricane this time round. Yeah, definitely for me, the lava is working. And if you look very carefully there, because the top bits uh, do spin around, as they tilt, it looks like the lava's like slopping around in there. It's a very clever little trick, that one. I like that a lot. So they've given, I think possibly they've given the Hurricane the best rolling stock or the most interesting one. Can't keep your eyes off those la lava pots and we'll just take a look at the Hurricane because we'd hate to get him sad. If we make him sad, he's going to start to look grumpy on us. But hey, some people may love the look of that train there. Yep, lava pots are the winner. The lava pots are the winner. Like them a lot. I love them. Well, they might call him the hurricane, but I can tell you what, still works. Thomas seems to be a lot faster. Uh, what it reminds me of is like a chocolate muffin on tracks. Just take one last look at this one before we move on, move on to the next. Uh, one thing about the hurricane is he is a nice, smooth runner, and I like to see that with Trackmaster too. Okay, let the Hurricane speed away here. He does get up speed if you tell him to go. Go, Hurricane, go! Okay, I'll come in and capture Steelworks Thomas, and the Hurricane will follow up behind. Who knows, that may be your favourite looking engine. Just because I think this one's better, doesn't mean you're not going to buy that one, does it, boys and girls? Okay, the next one in this tour review, it's Merlin the Invisible. This looks totally awesome as a Trackmaster 2 train. I read in the box there it says the gears spin, so I can only assume the back piece of rolling stock here has something that spins around as it moves, we hope. Merlin's face, let's just say, I'd say he looks mischievous. Mysterious, maybe? Happy camper as well. Yes, uh, it is a very curious one because it has been chromed, and now, I'm, now I see this, I want a chrome Thomas. So maybe we'll leave a comment, please Mattel make us a chrome Thomas, and I'm sure they will if we ask politely. Very nice looking engine, this one. I can only assume this one is going to be very popular. And let's get out of the box. That's weird. I thought I left the rubber chicken on the bench here somewhere. I needed to unbox Merlin. Are you playing tricks on me? Poof! Ah! Here you are, chicken. Come with me. And the chicken works like this. And it'll work every single time. It's sort of weird. Sometimes people don't have any faith in the rubber chicken, but I've got... Okay, I think Merlin is free of the box. Look at that. He's free. Okay, chicken, you know what? Sad news, you're fired. 
just looks totally awesome. And the first thing we can get rid of this is this. Magic gone. I'm just getting the batteries into this and it's funny, now I've got it out of box. I'll tell you what, uh, this is the one to get. Uh, yes. <laughs> It's very nice, it is extremely nice, and let me just screw this up here. Merlin is like holding a mirror. Uh, it's highly reflective, you can see the camera, you can probably see me in it as well. This is amazing. Well, it's the first Chrome uh, Trackmaster 2 toy that I've had, and I'm trying to think back, have they done anything like this in this style of train before? Wow. It's totally stunning, and... For me, I think this is one that, how could you not let this stay on the shelf? How could you not have this as part of your train set at home? There's Merlin's face, and for some reason it's reminding me of the old Cranky in a round version of the face. It's that sort of cheeky, oh, smart aleck type face. I, like I said, I don't know if he's good or bad or indifferent. Is he an experimental engine? I think these numbers... Um, designate that. There's also on the front here, notice there's a number here. Notice it's got a little bit of buffer details as well. Maybe maybe someone in the toy factory is starting to wake up to what's important, hey? Actually, looking over there, Hurricane had some, well, painted on details, but I think it's the way, the new way they're doing these trains. But just looking more closely here, there's a gold piece of detailing there, which is nice. There's the Merlin thing. Man, you can see everything reflecting back in this. It's dangerous, isn't it? Hey, very, very nice work indeed. And we'll come up and look at the top here. I don't understand why he's got three things there. The audience will tell me what that is. These are for... Oh, what is it for? Is it for the air thing, isn't it? To make the air go up so the chuff chuff doesn't take out the driver? Is that what that's for? And I've actually forgotten their name. And there's a nice close-up of a Merlin's face. Very impressive, isn't it? I just had a, a word come to them. I think they're called flukes. Oh, I'm wrong there. Flange. I got flange. Something F. I might be. <laughs> I might be making a fool of myself as I normally am. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's the wheels. I don't know whether red wheels work with that. Uh, to me, when you have chrome, what works with chrome is black. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a George Miller thing. The director George Miller, when he was doing those Mad Max cars, he talked about chrome and black a lot. The way they go together. I don't know, I'm not a colour stylist, maybe, maybe someone in the toy factory knows more than me. The tender looks like this. 783, can I only imagine these are like experimental numbers. I haven't seen the, the DVD or anything, it's not, as I'm making this video here, it's not released yet. It seems like all my audience has seen this, this movie, I don't quite understand it. That's very nice, isn't it, seeing everything in reflection there. And this is, I think, maybe the nicest bit of rolling stock in this whole set. Look at that, it's, a, it's like a piston that turns it. I've got no idea. It's like a, I don't, I don't know what it is. But it's interesting looking, and I think that's, you know, nine-tenths of the battle of, of making a nice-looking toy, is having something interesting and something that's like a fidget spinner. You can play with this. You can take it to school and just do this all day long. And the teacher's going to confiscate it from you, I'm sure, and the other children are going to want it. It's ticking a lot of the right boxes. Yeah, it's got a gear in there, so as we turn around, hopefully we're going to see this thing doing that. But I'll tell you what, this is, I was picking Merlin up again, totally, totally awesome. Well, they're the three characters that we've been looking at in this video, and, I mean, which one really is banging out at you and popping out at you? This one here. It's that chrome thing. It's just reflecting everything. It's just utterly amazing. What I'm going to do is take out, unfortunately, take out this Steelworks Thomas here, Move the hurricane into uh, this middle track here because the rolling stock is very nice. And we'll get, um, oh, hurricane's just taking a tumble there. We'll get Merlin the Incredible Invisible up on that track there and get Merlin back on track. Wow. And even then, look at that between those two there. Straight away, you just your eye just goes to that. Before I get steaming here, I've just had a very dangerous thought bubble. Let's hope Mattel's listening to me. Now that I've seen this, you know what I'm thinking, and I want... I mean, guys, start listening to the audience, please, and the people who've looked at this stuff for years. Can you please do a track pack like this? And let's do, like, a gold, Thomas. Of course, we know you can do this chroming work now. And do these engines in chrome or whatever. Make a really full-on track pack. And I'm deadly serious, you know, I see that, and straight away I think, how can I amplify that? Bang. Imagine that. Even as a totally chrome set, it'd be totally awesome.
Oh, but thought bubbles are dangerous and they're quite costly sometimes. And hey, big toy companies, uh, well, they tend to blame Barbie for their woes. And I'll just put that aside gently. It may have been harsh to say, but I'll tell you what, this toy company, as in Fisher Price will tell, have got to start thinking really smart and thinking outside the square. And who knows, in seeing that, we might be starting to see the beginning of it. And I can tell you this, well, the Hurricane's actually a bit faster than Merlin there. Uh, but look at Merlin going along there in particular. Look at that piece of rolling stock. Totally stunning, isn't it? This will be dangerous to say, but I think it's one of the most impressive pieces of Trackmaster 2 gear that I've seen to date. And I tell you what, I'm, well, I think I've seen it all. That is really fantastic eye candy. And to top it off, you get this amazing little bit of rolling stock that's doing that. I wish I knew what that was. Maybe if I'd seen the film, I could explain exactly what that's doing. It's sad I haven't got a sunny day because I'd love to set up a railway outside and put this toy train here out in the sun. It would just be, well, you'd need major sunglasses or a welding helmet to stop the reflection of the sun. Is the whole invisible trick with this is that the fact that, that he's chrome and things seem to reflect in it and often when things reflect they can disappear? Is that what's going on in the film? That's, that's what I'm assuming. And the one thing about this toy here is strangely, it's one of the first times I've seen the toy in hand which looks far more impressive than what you see on the box. Well, Steelworks Hurricane's got the huff because I've been talking uh, too highly about Merle. <laughs> It might get ugly here in a second. Oh, he's given Merlin the shove here. Oh, can you believe this, boys and girls? He's really turning to the back of Merlin there. He's causing all sorts of trouble there. Hurricane, he must be a meanie. Look at what he's doing here to Merlin. That's not very nice to do. Get out of my way, you invisible hunk of steel. Get out of my way. I've got no idea what sort of voice uh, Hurricane's got because, you know, as I kept saying, I haven't seen the film, but uh, there's a very strange star mate that's set up there, and it looks like uh, Merlin is certainly holding on the track there. He's saying, Nobody's going to bother me, I'm the invisible Merlin! Woo Whoa! I thought the tender was going to go over there for a second. And all this trouble on the uh, turntable here has distracted me from showing you a picture of Merlin on the back of the box that looks nowhere near as impressive as his. Chrome toy does. Whoa! Oh, I thought it was going to go over there. That was scary. Oh, sooner or later, something's going to give. Something's going to give. Oh, no! Bell is off the tracks and the hurricane shooting through! Wow, he's a really wounded warrior there, and uh, very, very sadly, oh my goodness me. There's a train wreck for you. Uh, Merlin is down, Merlin is down. Yes, yeah, so that totally uh, derailed the video, didn't it? Uh, no pun intended, and I'll try and get Merlin back on here. Naughty Hurricane, settle. Hurricane back on here, and we'll get to this, um, the box artwork that I'm totally distracted by. Okay, they're back on. There's the box artwork of Merlin. I tell you what, it just does not give it justice to uh, what you're getting in uh, the real form. I did hear Thomas had the huff because he's been ignored. And what I will do is I'll add Thomas onto this outside track here so he can, he can play with Merlin Invisible. And he's just lost his dragons. And oh, play with me, Thomas. Play. After a little bit of confusion and delay, I have got Thomas on. So what I'll do is get the hurricane going first. And he has been proven to be a troublemaker. Merlin's going next, and uh, still works. Thomas is also on his way. And it looks totally awesome, doesn't it? Wow. I know which one my eye is following. Maybe you can tell me who you're following here. It's that one there, boys and girls. That is uh, that is amazing. Totally amazing. Oh, but watch out! Still works. Thomas is coming up to give that bit of rolling stock the bit of a nudge there. It might be giving Merlin the half off the rails here. He's not happy at all. Not happy at all. Looks like the hurricane's coming up the side to cause trouble as well. Watch out, Merlin! They don't like your magic tricks. It looks like it may cause a whole ton of confusion and delay. Oh, but Thomas is easing back a bit. There's not much happening at the moment. I'm keeping a very close eye. Oh, what's happening? Oh, Merlin's coming across. Oh! Oh, no, no, we're down. They're down. Merlin is down. Thomas is off the tracks, and I think the instigator of that was the hurricane! Oh, 
with all that screaming I know the neighbours are starting to call the police now <laughs> but hey as I keep saying that is oh Thomas is down again uh, that's the simplest fun isn't it how simple is that like a double circle there on a turntable couple of Trackmaster 2 trains mind you these are very awesome I keep saying uh, boys and girls and mumsies and dadsies please go out and buy these and Mattel don't talk to me so who knows maybe someday something will trigger maybe they'll make for me a nice chrome set of toys like a Leo King video pack wouldn't that be nice eh hey wouldn't that be a really really nice idea the Invisible Merlin, a very impressive Trackmaster 2 train, uh, almost some of the best toy eye candy I've seen in a long time, but there was actually a toy I purchased from Japan, you know where this is going don't you, yes, this Tomy Streamlining Thomas, now let's just see which one of these two catches your eye, now this is actually a very fast train, I'll get Merlin going first, I'll get this Tomy Thomas going next, yeah, go Thomas go, it's going to be a real test uh, because it's really one very very impressive looking train versus another it may be a very unfair comparison to do uh, two totally different styles of train in many many ways with this Tommy streamlining Thomas here I tell you what it uh, it's a sort of toy you think wow it reminds you of of the way Tommy is the sounds that it makes it makes a very distinctive sound and it really just shows you the drift that's going on especially <laughs> Merlin doesn't like the attention, does he? He's starting to plow, oh, he's starting to give the shove here. Merlin the Invisibles, oh, he's going to take the Streamlining Thomas out. Oh, my goodness me. I can't believe it. The Streamlining Thomas is on the track. So Merlin's playing up over the background there. And it looks like any Clarabelle off the layer. And the Merlin has just caused a whole ton of trouble here. Can you believe that? I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Wow. Oh, Thomas is down. Thomas is down! Maybe I've picked Merlin's character a little bit wrong. Maybe he is a bit of a trickster, eh? Wow, didn't he didn't like uh, being given the visual shove in a sense, and I'll get him back on track, and I would say somehow... No, 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 that's enough, Merlin. Stop playing games on us. Stop playing games. He was actually starting to pick up an um, appetite for destruction. He kept jumping the, tra the train rails there. I'll give Merlin a stop, but it's a very curious thing to do when you think you've seen the most awesome train in the world, uh, then along comes uh, something really, really awesome. And I'll have my final bit to say about this. Now I've seen uh, all three of these engines, and they all impress me in different ways. Maybe with the Hurricane, the most impressive part to this pack here, and get it for this reason, is the rolling stock. I think that was very impressive, the way it looks like it's sloshing around as it goes around. The Steelworks Thomas, I like the rolling stock a lot, okay, I especially like the Thomas, we all like it when we get a nice specialised Thomas, and we've been saying it for years and we're finally getting it with a very specialised face, okay, so there's a lot to like about that Thomas there, I like the fact he's really grubbed down. Now the standout engine of the three, and I'll just pull it forward because there's more than just the engine which was the standout, the piece of rolling stock in this I thought was excellent. Okay, so it looks like the toy factory that makes this stuff starting to possibly panic because they keep looking at their share price and finally we're getting some nice stuff. Uh, it, when you see things as spanky as this, it has you wanting for more and this is a classic example of it. And really for me, all three packs are very important to have really nice additions to my Trackmaster 2 collection of toys. And just to really, really finish off here, who missed out? on a wing Thomas, eh? I noticed these hung around in the stores for a bit and I think possibly this spooked people and maybe the Annie and the Clarabelle uh, disappointed people. I think I've got the right in saying that. Yeah, it was that sort of era of things. I think, I think Hugo was popular, okay? And this one here, I think of that set was the most popular. Very hard to find this set here. For me it was at least. Maybe it's different where you live. Uh, this one here, it's funny, people said the, the Great Race didn't generate much good vibe, but I thought it was fantastic for the toys, or some of them. 
I call this one the David Bow Thomas and had the trophy and everything. It um it sat on the shelves for a bit, but in the end, yeah, it did it did sell. Uh, I noticed there's no more left in the stock, and it gets onto these two guys here, and I've actually got examples of them in box. And I think these were the real showstoppers of uh, this series of trains here. This is the Shooting Star Gordon. Uh, I didn't see these sit around on the shelves for too long. Like, maybe you've got a totally different story. Mind you, we can't see what gets sold online, or I can't see. And I think this one here, and I think I remember people saying this, the, the Flying Scotsman here. This one here, wow, did it sell hot and fast, and I don't think that really surprised that many people. So in seeing something like that uh, be very popular and sell very fast, I can only assume the exact same thing will happen with something like that.